Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Kitty Cat and I am back with another video. So today's video, I had to throw on a blazer today because I'm coming at you with a serious message. Yeah, it's pretty serious I would say. Today's video is all about how to help your best friend or someone that you love who is in an unhealthy relationship. What is an unhealthy relationship? Um, if you Google it, it's actually not super easy to find. I had to do a little bit more digging to find out the definition of an unhealthy relationship. But if you're unaware of what an unhealthy relationship is, here is a quick definition from her campus. An unhealthy relationship is a relationship where one or more of the people involved exhibit behaviors that are not healthy and are not found in mutual respect for the other person. An unhealthy relationship is not necessarily an abusive relationship, but it can be. Unhealthy relationships can also be talked about as toxic relationships, and a toxic relationship can make you feel drained, depleted, and even sometimes distraught. So I think most of us can kind of tell the difference between a healthy relationship and an unhealthy relationship most of the time. Sometimes you can't tell. But when you are close to somebody, some like if it's your best friend, your sister, your cousin, someone that you're close to, or even your brother, you know when someone you're close to is in a relationship that's not healthy for them. Because you start to see the signs, whether it's physical abuse, emotional abuse, or you hear the way that their partner speaks to them, you get an idea that something is going on. And as a friend, you can feel like, oh my gosh, like I want to help my friend get out of this, or I want to help the person that I love in my life get out of this situation, but I don't know how to help them. It's really, really tricky because a lot of times when you're in a toxic relationship, you don't even really realize it because you're so blinded by love, lust, deception, you know, you're you're not really fully aware of everything that's going on because you're in, it's like you're in the movie, you know, like when you're watching a movie, you see everything from the outside looking in and you're like, oh my gosh, like he's cheating on you or something, but the character doesn't know that, you know, so it's kind of like that too when you are the friend on the outside looking in of the relationship when you notice those really scary things. So I have five tips and tools to help you um, if there's someone that you love that's in an unhealthy relationship. The first thing that I would say I would start with with an unhealthy relationship is probably start with the don'ts. The first thing you don't want to do is to judge your to judge your friend, to judge your family member, whoever's going through the unhealthy relationship. Don't judge them. You really don't know exactly what's happening behind closed doors. Never judge your friend. You don't ever know what someone's dealing with inside and why they're choosing to stay with someone who treats them like crap. We don't really know that. But the, the last thing you need as someone who's in a toxic relationship is people around you judging you. Because the minute that you feel like you don't have your friends anymore and you don't feel like you have a support system, who are you going to lean on? You're going to lean on your partner. And you're going to get even more sucked in to the toxicity and the drama. So the first and the best thing, I think one of the best things you can do is to not judge your friend at all whatsoever. The second tool or tip that I would give is to just be there for them. You know what I mean? Listen to them. Validate them. Believe them. When they're sharing their experiences with you, when they're sharing their stories with you, their text messages, their, you know, their voicemails, whatever they're choosing to share with you, please believe them because you may be their only person on the outside that they're communicating to and they're counting on you as their friend to be there for them. They may not necessarily be ready to leave their partner that's causing them this pain and this suffering and this overall just drama. They may not be ready to leave them, but they count on you as their friend to still be there for them. Anytime that they want to hang out or that they need to talk on the phone or, you know, they just need some time to get out of the house or they just need time away from their partner, be there for them, you know? And I know as a friend on the outside looking in, it can be so frustrating because you're like, oh my gosh, just freaking leave him already or oh my gosh, just leave her already. Oh my gosh, how many times are you going to allow this to happen? Just be there for them, you know, listen to them even if it sounds like it's a broken record. Be there for them, validate them, and listen to them. They are going to appreciate you as their friend and their support system way more 
in the long run. But I would say number three is to provide them with resources. Every single state has shelters that people can go to that are facing abuse in their relationships. Um, so if your friend needs to go to a shelter, if you don't feel comfortable having your friend stay with you because their partner knows where you live or you're in fear that they're going to retaliate and that it's not safe for them to stay with you, um, maybe find a shelter that they can go to or some kind of resource or maybe a phone line of someone that they can call of maybe someone who's been through that similar abuse that they're facing or something that they're going through so that they have someone that can really help them out and talk to them and if you are able to let them have a place to stay for a couple nights or if you are able to lend them some money or give them some food anything really will help out your friend during this time and I mean when I say unhealthy relationship it it's a very large spectrum, I guess. There could be, you know, emotional abuse happening, manipulation. It could be physical. There could be a whole bunch of different things that are happening. But I think it's really important to at least educate your friends, empower your friends, and let them know, hey, you've got options. If you don't feel like this is a good place for you, these are all the places that you could go. And that would take you in in a heartbeat. Tip tool number four is verbally letting them know that you are there for them. A lot of times when you are in a relationship like that, your partner can make you feel like you don't have anybody else, you, that they are all you have to lean on. And sometimes you do forget that you have friends and you have family and people that love you unconditionally and that only want to see you happy. Everyone could use that pick me up every once in a while of, hey, I'm here for you. I'm always here to listen to you. You're my friend. You're my family. You're my cousin. You're my whatever. I love you and I'm always here to lift you up when you're feeling down. Letting people that are going through something like that, letting them know that they do still have friends, that they do still have people that care about them means so much. And last, I would say tip number five, tool number five, is to be patient, okay? Be patient. I know that it can be hard being on the outside looking in and you're like, just leave that person already. Like, I'm so sick of hearing all the things that they say to you or the things they do to you. Your friend that's going through the unhealthy relationship, that's experiencing all of this toxic behavior, at some point, they will leave. At some point, they will decide that, you know what, I have had enough of this. I'm worth more. I'm ready to leave. Now, leaving is the most dangerous time for them. That's when a lot of people get hurt. It's when a lot of people end up not being able to leave. Be patient. They will leave when they are ready to leave. They will leave when the time is right for them. And they may leave and then end up going back a week later. And you have to just be patient as their friend and allow your friend to make those mistakes, to go back as many times as they need to so that there's no what ifs or any, oh, well, maybe if I had stayed a little longer, we could have made it work. I think after you've left somebody so many times or that you've tried to leave them so many times, you realize like, oh, we tried to get back together and it didn't work. Ugh, oh, we tried this and it didn't work. After so many times, you are going to, your friend will realize of like, this doesn't really work for me. Even though it's so hard to be a bystander and to witness all of the things that your friend is experiencing, I would just say, you know, be there for them, listen to them, validate them, believe them, provide them with resources, don't judge them. And overall, just be patient. Just, I think when it comes down to friendship, you are there for your friends through the good and through the bad because leaving something that was maybe comfortable for you yet really draining, it's really scary to and vulnerable to think, oh my gosh, I'm going out into the world where I might not have my friends anymore. I might be completely alone. So that's why it's so important to just be patient and to just know that your friend is going to make the right decision when it is time for them. All right, y'all, I hope that you like this video. Have you had a friend that's gone through an unhealthy relationship? What were some things that you did to help them get through that? Leave those comments down below. Let's get a dialogue started and let's help some people out, y'all. Don't forget, we got new videos coming every single Thursday. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there. Hit the bell, all that stuff. You don't wanna miss what's coming next. All right, y'all, see you in the next one. Bye.